feature debut by Ari Aster, whose short films have explored family uh, rituals and dysfunction. The film starts with a grandmother's death, talk of her secret friends and her secret rituals, very ominous beginning. Tony Collette is an artist who makes small world miniatures, strange models of emotional trauma that look like creepy dolls' houses, kind of reconstructions of things from her own past. The camera begins by creeping into one of those doll's houses, giving us the impression that everything we're seeing is happening in a world which is slightly artificial, suggesting perhaps that it's all somehow inflected by the central character's inherited anxiety. So, so far, so Babadook. Uh, there are broiling family tensions. A daughter longs for the grandmother and makes strange clucking sounds. Her son has issues with unspoken secrets that come to the fore at the family table. You OK, Mom? What? Is there something on your mind? Is there something on your mind? It just seems like there might be something you want to say. Yeah. Like what? I mean, why would I want to say something so I could watch you sneer at me? Sneer at you? I don't ever sneer at no. you. Oh, sweetie, you don't have to. You get your point across. Okay, so fine, then say what you want to say then. Hey, Dad. I don't want to say anything. I've tried saying it. Okay, things. so try again, release yourself. Oh, release you, you mean? Yeah, fine, release me. Just say it. Just <laughs> say it. Don't you swear at me, you little. <laughs> don't you ever raise your voice at me. I am your mother. Do you understand? Uh, worth pointing out that the bird song there, uh, because it was a horror movie, have been replaced with crows and ravens. Yes, because Which, the, the normal bird song felt a bit too feeble. Apparently. Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, as you'll all know, there are posters everywhere saying it's this generation's The Exorcist, comparing it to Exorcist, The Shining, um, uh, and Psycho. And I have to say, I think those comparisons do it no favours whatsoever. It begins very promisingly. It begins with this, uh, I said, very Babadooky kind of setup. And there is there's something that happens, and I won't describe anything about it because I think the film should be seen unspoiled. There's something that happens in the first act which is so brilliantly constructed that I was genuinely took my breath away. There is a sequence which made me gasp, which is worsened by a sense of by a silence, which is then very protracted after the immediate shock. And I thought, this is this is great. This is really going places that I hadn't expected. What a shame, therefore, that having started out in that fashion and having started out nodding its head towards Ira Levin, and there's a lot of Rosemary's Baby in this, um, that it then kind of starts to downshift into the territory of Dennis Wheatley. And that Can what you happens... what you mean by that? What I mean is that when it begins, it has a real psychogeography to it. It is a film which, which absolutely makes sense in psychological terms, and particularly if you know... You know, the short films that are actually made before, that all kind of fits. And then what happens is, as the film moves on past that great first act, it starts to replace atmosphere with all too superfluous plot exposition. It starts to replace um, what actually is an in something which has intrinsic internal sense with something which is much more, uh, for me, generically cliched. And when you get the posters that say, it's like The Exorcist and it's like The Shining, no, it's not. It's like um, The Witch and it's like It Comes at Night, but it doesn't have the sustained sense of terror of the former, nor does it have the uh, socio-political underpinning of the latter. And here's the key to it. The problem with Hereditary is this. The things that it gets right, it gets so right that when it gets things wrong, the, the, the come down is much worse. I think this is a very, very talented filmmaker. I think the cast are terrific. I think Tony Collette is brilliant. I think you really get a sense that you, you know, Gabriel Byrne does hang dog better than anybody else. You really get a sense of them as characters and the conceit is really well done. But I think as a feature, it stumbles. I think it is only sporadically scary and it is in the end, from my point of view, somewhat infuriating. And I have to say, my experience has been that of the people I've spoken to after I saw the film, it tends to be people who are immersed in, in horror are less impressed by it than perhaps other audiences. Although that said, I suspect that the way the publicity campaign has worked for it 
will not work for it in terms of audiences. If you want to enjoy this best you can, don't think Exorcist Shining, if there's an Exorcist comparison there, it's Exorcist 3, but don't think that. Think it comes at night, think which. But I have to say, for me, it doesn't have the psychological uh, continuity of Babadook. It doesn't have that socio-political underpinning of It Comes at Night, and it doesn't have that rising sense of terror of the witch. I'm sorry.